Hello, hello. So today I'm going to do another little art haul. I've collected a couple of things from Jackson's. They've had a bunch of little sales. So I've just been kind of getting a couple of things here and there. And I thought I would open them all up today and share them with you guys. So let's take a look. Well, let's put this over here and we'll go through them. Okay, so the first one we have here is a little tube. I think this is a five mil tube from Holbein. And this is the shadow green. Now, I can't remember which artist I saw using this. I believe it was probably Natasha Newton. Her color palette is just right up my alley. So I wanted to try this one out. The next thing I got is this De La Rowney designer gouache. And I got this in flesh tint, which is an unfortunate name. I really dislike it when brands name things flesh tint. I don't know whose flesh is this color. Um, and also it's just, it just makes me feel icky, just the name flesh. <laughs> I can understand if it was like, you know, a color of my skin, so it would be like Caucasian skin tone, but fleshed tint is just creepy. Anyway, besides the name, I just wanted to try this out. I wanted to use a gouache as a more opaque medium over some of my work. I have been using some Roman Schmoll colors. They have the tint and they also have like a titanium buff. Uh, that are, act a little more opaque and I really wanted even more than that so I was thinking of using acrylic ink but then I thought why not use some gouache and then it will still be water soluble so I could move it around if I wanted to. The next one I got is grey titanium from Daniel Smith. Uh, I got this because I am enjoying the Aquarius grey from Roman Schmoll but I really liked the color of this. I saw someone swatching it and it seemed a little different and I was just interested to see how this worked. And I also wanted to use a liquid paint rather than a pan paint because I was trying to add some texture and I wanted to kind of add some on there and then add water to it while it was on the paper. So I really wanted to get something that was in a tube. So I decided to grab this one to see if it could get the effect that I was looking for. And then I got a couple more Roman Schmoll paints to add to my collection. I got French Ochre, Napfall Red, Anthroquinone Red, Quin Violet, Cobalt Violet Deep, and Prussian Blue. And then we have this Daniel Smith Watercolor Primatex set. And I know this has been out for quite a while, but I just uh, came across some dot charts that I was looking at and a couple of these colors were on there and I really liked them. So I decided to grab this set. So this set comes with six tubes and they're all five mils each. And the colors are Pimentite Genuine, Mayan Blue Genuine, Amethyst Genuine, Rhodonite Genuine, Jadeite Genuine, and Hematite Genuine. And I think my favorite is probably the first one and the last one. So the pimentite and the hematite. The granulation in these seem really interesting. And they also have like a couple of different colors in there. So I think they'll be quite interesting with the landscape work that I do. I also picked up this Pelican 4001 fountain pen ink. And this one is in Brilliant Brown. And I believe this is kind of an orangey leaning brown. So I'm not sure if it's going to be too light when I water it down, uh, but I like kind of mixing medias together and I thought this would be a beautiful ink to write with as well as to use with my art. So this one was just a little bit of a fun purchase, but they're a new brand on Jackson's called Yuli Watercolors. I honestly have no idea how to pronounce that. I'm terribly sorry. If anyone knows, let me know. But they have this amazing range of metallic and sort of holographic, I'm not sure what the word is for this kind of color changing watercolor. So I wanted to grab a couple of little swatches. They're pretty thick if you can, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I really wanted to try those out. I don't tend to use these types of watercolor in my work very much, but I was super intrigued by them and I wanted to just swatch a couple out and see how they look. And I also picked up a couple of brushes from the Roman Schmoll line. They had these on sale quite a while ago. I just picked up a couple. This is the Synthetic Squirrel Liner. So it's a super thin brush for doing some detail. And this little dagger brush, which is really cute. So I wanted to try this out. This is just a quarter inch dagger brush. I do have a couple of bigger ones and I'm really enjoying them. And so I thought I would just see what Roman Schmoll brushes were like. So the next thing I got from Jackson's was this 
Masters hand soap. So I actually own their brush cleaner, which I absolutely love. It's uh, in this little tub. You only need a little bit and it works miracles. It gets uh, acrylic paint out of like dried acrylic paint out of your paint brushes, ink, everything. It's really amazing and it's super smooth and uh, it's really good, but I've been kind of using it, like dipping my fingers in here and using it to get ink off my fingers, uh, which is kind of a waste because it's a little bit more expensive than the bar soap. And my sweet friend V over on uh, Paint in Hiding, I'll put her channel below, actually bought this to clean her brushes and found out that it had a bit too much texture in it. And so I thought, oh, that's perfect for washing my hands. So um, I jumped on Jackson's and grabbed one of these because... I want to use it for my hands, whereas I think she went and got one of these so she can use it with her brushes. Okay, so I'm going to open this guy up. I have been refilling my fountain pens and have gotten nice and dirty, <laughs> so it's a good time to use it. And this smells, this smells like spearmint gum. It smells really good. So let's try it out and see if it gets off the stuff. So here we are over at my sink washing my hands because who doesn't want to see that? Anyway, um, it did a really good job. It suds it up really nicely. It didn't dry my hands out at all. Uh, it got off all of the ink except for the little bit of pigment ink that was the um, Rohr and Klingner sketch ink. And that tends to stain pretty badly anyway. It's, but it got off all the Ferris wheel press and the dye mine ink that I was mucking around with as well as some watercolor. So I think it did a great job and it is doesn't seem to be very harsh on your hands, which is nice. And it doesn't really leave them with a scent. So I think it's a winner. And then I have this little mystery package here, which is actually just a basic set of lino cutting tools. I have been interested in maybe creating some lino cuts or stamps. So this set is just a super basic one that just comes in a cardboard box and it's the Jackson's brand. It's really nice and simple and it has a bunch of different size cutting tools and angles. There's some flat ones, curved ones. A really nice tiny little detail one so my major in university was printmaking so I was kind of feeling the urge to do some lino printing and make some stamps so hopefully I will be doing that in the future and then I have a couple of stationery items from Amazon and Aliexpress so these guys I got as a two-pack on Amazon that was a really good deal. I think it was around $9 or something for both packs. And these are great for writing in your journals. I think they work fine in Hobonichi. I use them in my Kimbor and they're great. Beautiful colors. And I ended up getting these two little bookmark tabs from AliExpress. They're super cute. They come in these little, <laughs> little containers huge container for such a small amount of clips but they just are really delicate this 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 collection is the four leaf clover I'm not sure if that is focusing but beautiful little four leaf clover designs and then I have the little bicycle one too so you can see the patterns on the outside but these are just like a little bike clip but really really paper thin all right, so I think that's all of the little art supplies and stationery things that I've collected to show you guys over the last couple of months. Uh, I will put all the links to these in the description in case you want to check them out. Um, again, some of those links are affiliate links, which just means that if you click on it and end up buying something, I get a little percentage back, which is super exciting. So thank you so much, guys, for clicking on those and for liking my videos and sharing my videos. It's been really fun. I'm enjoying having this little arty community of ours, and I'm glad you're part of it. Um, yeah, so I hope this was helpful and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!